Hey, this is Joe Price. I just recently created a sheet for Montana that includes all the families that we were trying to add to the family tree. So these are families that originally didn't have any matches to the family tree and the match files that FamilySearch sent us. And so we were able to add those families to the tree. And now what we want to do is help connect those families to other uh, families on the tree. And so let me uh, share my screen so you can see how this Google Sheet works. Um, so you just come in, you can just uh, basically check out a few families and this number tells you how big the family is. And here you can see it by county or township. So you can pick a place or maybe you have an affinity. And, um, and then once you're in here, it's really kind of an open-ended uh, question. So you can see right here, it'll say US Census Project. That means that we were the ones that added it. If you see someone else's name, then it usually means it's already connected, uh, but you can double check on that. So what I do is I like to, um, so here we are at the head of household. I like to hit view tree and then um, look at it in descendancy view because then sometimes I can see which of the people have hints and we'll be looking for those blue boxes. So right now it's basically just WH Connor that has a hint as so we can take a look at that record. Um, and so you can see here, uh, like it's possible it's a match. It's a little hard to tell. Uh, let's see. So you can see she was born in uh, Missouri, 1892. The marriage was in 1899 in Tennessee. That's possible. Uh, I don't I don't see strong evidence that this is a match, but um, so I probably wouldn't attach that one just yet. But what I do find is really helpful is I like to go over to Ancestry and kind of look at these uh, side by side. And uh, one thing I like to do is just go right to that 1910 record. And sometimes you can see that maybe there um, the name was missing next. And so that's often what can make it hard to link to other people. And you can see that it looks like the correct spelling is coiner. And actually, if it is coiner, then we have a whole bunch of possible record hints. But it's really interesting that if we come over here to family search, that we sometimes won't uh, get to see that same kind of uh, set of possible matches. Because you can see here, okay, there's a coiner right there. There's one there. Um, and, and notice if this is our person, then it is already attached to a record. But let's take a look over here on Ancestry. And one thing I do like to do is hit this button down here that says uh, check, uh, make a connection. And sometimes I can find a really great uh, family tree for the person. Uh, the other record that tends to be really useful is uh, find a grave. Uh, so if I go into find a grave, then sometimes you can see right here, this is almost a spot on match. You can see Beaverhead County, Montana, which is where we are. You can see William Henry. And if we go back to William Henry then, you can see that everything lines up really well. There's William Henry, there is his spouse, Matil, uh, Jenny, uh, about the same birth year, and then one of their children's Maggie, which 1892 doesn't seem to be showing up here. So that's kind of uh, interesting, but this definitely looks like a fantastic match, especially after Ancestry told us about the possible misspelling in the census. Uh, so let me just hit the make a connection here. And so then now here we have a really good, um, a bunch of family trees that we could possibly uh, use. And you can see that, you know, these first two seem to be kind of, there seems to be a little bit of difference of opinion about um, maybe the name of his dad uh, and whether he's born in Virginia or West Virginia. Um, but this finder grave might be a really great place to start. And what I find is sometimes if I just fix a little bit of info, then family search will start giving me hints and maybe even find a possible duplicate. The coverage in Montana is really good. So sometimes if I can maybe just even get in a death date, then that's enough. We have a possible uh, duplicate or, uh, you know, maybe a, a source that might connect me to someone else. Okay, so, so it's still surprising. We're not getting, you know, um, showing up just yet. Okay, there it is, perfect. Okay, so there's our possible duplicate. So we can review the merge. And then I'm going to switch sides because the one that was already there has a lot of information, which is great. And you can see here's Matilda Jane. And if we look at their kids, there's Margaret. So she's a match too. And so this is a case where, you know, it's really interesting. You can kind of look and see when these were attached. But basically, people have been attaching sources for a very long time for this family, and they never found the 1910 census. So I think a lot of people are concerned that maybe we've created duplicates with the 1910 census project. But honestly, this uh, merging the duplicates won't take me very long, and it probably will take much less time than it would have taken to find this really hard to find 1910 census record. Okay, so then we'll just do make sure everything up. So we'll merge him. 
And so uh, merging counts as connecting. And because really what we want is these families to be connected into the bigger tree. And so doing a merge is often a great way to do that. And what I'm doing each time is I'm just copying the code because see, even here, it doesn't show up as a possible duplicate. So I have to come and merge uh, kind of. You can see here that maybe this is something that threw it off, like in the census she's listed as having been born in Missouri. And whereas over here, it lists her as being born in Montana. So again, these families that we added are just, they're hard to find. There's, um, you know, we're finding either that there's, um, you know, they, they wrote it down wrong in the census or uh, last one here. And then this one did show up as a possible duplicate. So that's great. And then, oh, you can see that looks great. And so then back in the sheet, we just write uh, a one for connected. And you can leave some notes. In this case, I might say was surname was uh, incorrect. Another one. This is a smaller family, so this one might be harder. So here we have William living with his son, Elza. And again, we can hit view tree to see if family search has any hints. You can see here Elza has a hint, and it's in Beaver County. So let's take a look at that. Again, sometimes I find just by attaching maybe a few hints, it, I can usually figure out what's going on. This looks like a great match. You can see same birth, um, dying in the same place where he was in the census. We have a very unique male name. And then this gives us the mother. And this is where it gets a little tricky to kind of think about, is this correct? This is where you want to be careful because you wouldn't want to, you know, munge two families together. But here you can see living here in Beaverhead with William. And uh, let's see what the son's name, 1884. So we're looking for a son in 1884. So this is where I'd be a little bit careful if you see William is born in Ireland. And this William is born a 10 year difference, but also in Ireland. So I, um, oh, and actually the maiden name's not even the same. So I'm not, I'm not sure why Family Search is suggesting this. Uh, you know, this is kind of dangerous because, you know, someone could have uh, connected these two together. Maybe it's right, but. Um, it doesn't look like it's right. And so there we go. Okay, so that was great because now we got a death date and we have a mother and then that might start to open up other hints. So here we have a find a grave record. You can see now we have an exact birth date. So we'll add that in. I also like to go over to uh, find a grave's website because sometimes it has other information there that's not on family search. Okay, so then we'll put this in here. Uh, let's take a look at what Ancestry has for us. Okay, so here's, uh, and another thing you can do is right from this search page, you can hit family trees and just um, see if maybe there's a family tree we could use as a starting point. You see, here's a John Elza. That would make more sense if his middle name was Elza. And so you can see William and Elizabeth Helder. So that looks really good. This one has five sources, four, three. I'm gonna start with this one. You can see we have a really good birth match. Uh, and this is interesting because they're saying he was born in Montana, which again might explain why we had a hard time, you know, making the match. And so actually what I would do is let's link right away to this. And you can see that it's John and Elsa. So that's kind of a hard case. Um, let's click at William. And you can see William's also here in the 1900 census. And he was born there. So maybe that was, maybe that other one was our person. Let's take a look. We've got Elizabeth Elder. They've got lots of kids. So this one will be really easy to connect. Uh, and so what I would do is I would just start bringing information over from here to family search. Um, and I just keep building out until I connect with someone on the tree. So I, I won't do that on the video, but I just wanted you to see that, you know, if you can find a really carefully curated public member tree on Ancestry, uh, a lot of times that can give you clues on how to look for it over here. Uh, like here, be just let me just show you kind of one trick with uh, John Elza. Uh, notice here that if I come on Family Search to search for him, I doubt Family Search is going to be able to find it because um, you know it's Elza here and John on the other. So you can see it's giving me all these Elzas. But if I were to tell Family Search, hey, why don't we check for the word John um, and search, then um, it'll pop, pop it up. Okay, even then it's not. So there's other things I sometimes do. I, I delete information. Oh, and it's actually the biggest thing here is that the uh, birthplace is also different. So there he is right there. 
And so, and notice he's attached to a person. So this is kind of cool. We can come here. So here he is on the tree with all of his family members. And so if that is in fact the right match, which it looks like it based on this information, then I would just need to merge John and merge William. And then we would be all done. Now there is this interesting puzzle of why Elizabeth is Ferguson over here, but Elder over here. Um, well, that's a trickier one to know you know what's going on there, but that's kind of like moving back farther. So that might be a puzzle that you could work out. Though it's interesting that on Ancestry, they have a picture of her and here on Family Search, we, we don't. And so this, uh, the Ancestry version of this particular part of the tree seems like it's been more carefully uh, curated. And when you're done, you could put in a one here. Nice thing about the Google Sheet is you can go pick a specific town. Uh, you can see it's here by county and by, uh, by and then, it makes it really easy for people just to put their names in wherever they want. So this sheet is helpful and we'd be willing to set up a sheet like this for other states throughout the country. Um, and again, we just wanted you to see that, you know, even though the 1910 census project may have created duplicates, we actually think it plays a really key role in uh, helping connect uh, census records to people, uh, especially the 1910 census. It's a, it's a fantastic record. It has a lot of discovery content in it. It tells you how many children women have had and how many are still alive. You get people's occupations. And so I, I really think the overarching goal of what we're trying to do in our lab is make sure that every single census record is attached to someone on the tree and that everyone on the tree is attached to all of their census records. Uh, in the long run, this is going to be the most important way that we get rid of duplication is by just ensuring that everyone has all the census records during their life. Because if everyone has all the census records during their life, you can't have duplicates because a census is a one-to-one -one mapping between the population and the record. And so it will create a one-to-one -one mapping between the population and the family tree if we have all the census records attached. So thanks for helping with this project. We're super excited to see how this goes and we'd be willing to set this up for other states.